Oh, hello and welcome to the old classic car channel and it is the Land Rover Series 3 circa 1979 uh, which is a subject of today's classic brochure review. Uh, I acquired this brochure from the local uh, British Leyland garage in Cheadle, Cheshire and I've hung on to it ever since. On the cover we have an example of the 109, so the pickup version, and two 88 inch versions. Now obviously the Land Rover continued in the uh, spirit of the earlier cars which uh, were introduced in 1948. The Series 3 came along in 1971 and continued in production until 1985. Like I say this is a mid-series uh, brochure from 1979. Uh, in total about 440,000 were built split between the 88 inch short wheelbase and the 109 long wheelbase. Now, compared to the Series 2 and the Series 2A that came before, there were a few visual clues that this was the later version. The grille was now plastic instead of metal, and the headlamps had moved out to the front wings rather than being tucked next to the grille. Those are the biggest visual differences between the Series 3 and the earlier Series 2 and 2A Land Rovers. So let's have a quick look inside and see what BL had to say about the Series 3. If we have a look over here first... We've got an illustration of a Land Rover in a rugged environment. Today's Land Rovers are stronger, safer and more reliable than ever before. Mm. There's a choice of short or long chassis versions, petrol or diesel power, and a range of different body styles, optional equipment and a comprehensive selection of Land Rover approved special appliances and bodies by specialist manufacturers. For year in year out operation on all types of terrain, in adverse weathers and climates, the four wheel drive Land Rover is still the world's most versatile vehicle. And we have MOG 651S, one of several MOG registered Land Rovers that feature in this brochure. That was a Birmingham registration series, which makes sense given that uh, Land Rover based over in Solihull. So this folds out and we have a diagram of all the different body styles. Um, we've got 17 described here. Got uh, canvas covered, fixed covers, uh, hard top with tailboard and top hinged flap, all manner of different versions, some of which will look familiar, I'm sure. We've got the 10 seater station wagon, and the 12 seater version, a 7 seater station wagon, chassis with wings, dash, and seat base. So you could buy them with just the front end and then be bodied depending on what you needed it for. So we've got quite a variety. It was certainly a very flexible vehicle on that separate chassis. Uh, it's just a shame that the chassis used to rust away so badly, at least in later years, if not straight away. And the, it's probably the chassis is probably the biggest weak spot of any of the classic Land Rovers. Uh, chassis obviously is underneath here. The body was mainly in aluminium, but the bulkhead here was steel. And uh, if you look at any tired Land Rovers now, if they've not snapped in half, they'll be rotting where the door hinges are and below the windscreen. That's where you have to check them out. So here we have the short wheelbase version. Let's have a look, see what it says. The 88 inch wheelbase four wheel drive short Land Rover is the go anywhere, do anything workhorse of the range. And it's a high mobility vehicle under any circumstances. In basic trim it is provided with a weatherproof canvas hood and glass door windows. And when required the canvas cover can be rolled up or removed altogether to provide a completely open and compact vehicle and the rear tailgate which is normally checked by chains can be dropped right down for easier loading. The rear body space will take all kinds of awkward and heavy loads and its non-rusting corrosion resistant aluminium alloy construction permits the carriage of manures, fertilizers and similar corrosive substances. Among many body options are included a truck cab giving excellent all-round visibility and a detachable full-length hardtop. So certainly a very Practical little vehicle. And over here we have another example climbing a rugged quarry pass by the look of it. All looking very nice. Land Rover 88 with its canvas top. Let's carry on through here. Let's see, now we have the long wheelbase Land Rover version, which I think I think these actually look quite quite nice. I quite happily run one of these. Um, of greater carrying capacity than the short Land Rover, the 109 inch wheelbase long Land Rover still retains the same exceptional mobility and do anything, go anywhere characteristics. 
In standard form, this vehicle has a snug truck cab, giving outstanding all-round vision and an open rear body. Various types of body coverings are available, and rear body space is generous and suitable for an endless variety of loads. A 2.6 litre six-cylinder petrol engine is offered to provide an extra power option, in addition to the robust four-cylinder petrol and diesel engines available for this and all other Land Rover models. The long Land Rover is used by the military and police forces of many countries, by game wardens, expeditions, relief organisations, national and local authorities, etc. It will operate in sand, mud, ice and snow, as well as producing a good turn of speed on the road. It will tow trailers, climb a gradient of 1 in 2 and maintain stability on steep sideways slopes. Its exceptional wide range of optional equipment enables each vehicle to be virtually custom built to meet the particular requirements of individual operators. There we go. Let's just have a quick looky over here. There's a long wheelbase with a fixed roof. Various other examples, Mog 561S in action. Another one there delivering feed. I mean Land Rovers were very popular with the farmers back in the day whereas I think now they're all running Japanese pickup trucks back in the 70s and 80s when the, the Series 3 was king before the Defender. Uh, these used to be everywhere and they still do a great job today if you can find one that isn't rusty. So we go over here. Got more examples of them in action. Of course here we've got them at an equestrian event because they're very popular for towing trailers, they were good tow vehicles even though they weren't particularly fast. And opposite we have the inward facing seat fitted in the rear of long, long station wagons They'll accommodate four people in the 10 seater or six in the 12 seater. Okay, and It's all very easy wipe down vinyl interior, no, no luxuries going on here. Uh, if you wanted a bit more comfort you go for the Range Rover but these Land Rover station wagons were a lot more utilitarian in their approach. Let's carry on through here and see what we can find. Like I said, there's about 440,000 of these. This series of Land Rover were built over the years. And in here we can see the updated interior compared to the Series 2A, the dashboard, the main uh, instrument cluster now moved in front of the driver, whereas previously it was over here, whereas earlier Land Rovers had a much more metal faced dashboard. Here things were sort of dragged into the 1970s with a moulded plastic affair. Whether it looks better or not is uh, up to personal opinion I think, but uh, it certainly sort of modernised things a bit for the era. Let's have a quick shifty over here. Seat belts are the static single handed type. Got a bit of information about the diesel engine and control and comfort. Each Land Rover offers high visibility seating accommodation for the driver and two passengers in the front compartment. Seat squabs and cushions are removable for cleaning and for access to the toolbox beneath the outer passenger seat. Long Land Rovers have an adjustable driver's seat, deluxe seats, additional interior trim and other cab refinements are optional extras. Instruments are grouped in a binnacle within the driver's line of vision, together with ancillary controls and warning lights for direction indicators. Oil pressure, alternator charge and headlamp main beam. Petrol models also have a choke warning lamp, while diesel models have low fuel level and heater plug warning lamps. Direction indicators, horn, headlamp flasher and dip switch are all operated by a single fingertip control on the steering column. Padded crash rails run the full width of the vehicle above and below the fascia parcel shelf. The lower portion offers protection for the knees and has provision for auxiliary instruments as well as radio and loudspeaker. Fresh air ventilation is provided by adjustable flaps below the windscreen. Let's keep going. So as they mentioned, you could either have a petrol or diesel engine, two and a quarter litre, or there was the optional 2.6 litre petrol six cylinder. Which sounds quite nice. On this page we've got some further information on those three particular engines. The four cylinder diesel, four cylinder petrol and the six cylinder petrol. The chassis, the box section chassis frame with its sturdy cross members provides an immensely strong foundation for the various Land Rover models and an ideal basis for special bodies and conversions. It's built to withstand the shocks of cross country operation and is heavily painted both inside and out to resist rust and corrosion. Mm -hmm. 
Individual components are equally robust and the whole unit combines good ground clearance with a low centre of gravity to minimise grounding and give stability on steep slopes. We've got a little bit more information about the transmission and over the page, over here, we have a closer look at the chassis itself. So anyone who's planning to restore a Land Rover, this is how your chassis should look. But sadly, they were a bit prone to rusting. I believe the long wheelbase is the one and nines could crack behind the cab, I believe. And they all suffered with rust throughout the main chassis sections and also on the rear cross member here. Uh, well, at least that's visible without clambering underneath. But uh, if this has gone rusty, chances are it'll have probably rotted out around here as well somewhere and not forgetting the bulkhead. So, uh, great vehicles, but they do need a bit of looking after. We've got some details on special accessories and equipment over here, uh, such as the alternator, a split charge facility, different types of cabs, detachable hard tops, uh, all sorts of uh, exciting gizmos. So I'll zoom in on those so we can have a proper look. We've got the power takeoff, and some extra goodies over here, such as a front winch. Uh, what else have we got? Centre and rear power takeoff units. Lamp guards, spare wheel carrier, jerry cans and brackets. All manner of uh, goodies to tailor your Land Rover for the off-roading experience. And we have uh, several more photographs of uh, Land Rover go anywhere type activities. Driving through a river, for example. And then over here, we have Land Rover Special Conversions. The cross-country performance capabilities of the Land Rover its load carrying capacity and availability in chassis form all contribute to the demand for this vehicle as the basis for special conversions and for the fitting of specialist applications appliances. We show just a few examples here. Left, police, fire and ambulance service vehicles. Above, a hydraulic platform. Right, a self-contained safari type motor caravan. That looks great, I quite fancy one of those. And a snow blade and a crop or verge sprayer. So, as Land Rover were keen to point out, these were very flexible vehicles and could be put to all manner of different uses, yeah, which is one of the reasons they survived in production for so long. And finally, we have the specifications, again for the three different engine options, all the transmission details, weights, payloads, uh, dimensions, will be over the page, there we go, dimensions for the 88 and the 109. And if anyone needs any of these specification details, I'll have a quick zoom in just to sort of show them a little bit more clearly. And finally, the rear cover of this particular brochure, which advises that BL Cars Limited is constantly seeking ways to improve the specification design and production of its vehicles, and alterations take place continually. A few details of super cover, and there we go. So that was the brochure for the 1979 Land Rover range in long and short wheelbase forms. I hope that was of interest. It would be nice to read some comments from Land Rover owners. I've never owned a, a classic Land Rover if you like. I did have a Discovery for a while, but I've never owned one of these. But I could easily see one of these joining the fleet at some point. Um, so it would be great to hear the comments from people who actually run Land Rovers now or remember them back in the day. Perhaps you used to sell them. British Leyland garages. It'd be interesting to hear your thoughts. What were they like? Were they poorly made or were they uh, was it just down to poor maintenance that the reliability wasn't perhaps all it could be? So hopefully this was of interest. Uh, if you like this kind of thing please like the video and subscribe to the channel because there'll be plenty more classic vehicle videos coming up very soon. Thanks for watching.